Hello my friends, this is MoogleMaster102 and welcome back to Tales of Graces. Today we're in the Humanoid Research Center. Last time we went ahead and had a little bit of an encounter to, with a new character in this story. Though she's not playable, but we find out more about Sophie through someone named Emerod, and Emerod basically told us that Sophie's not actually human. Kind of, kind of unfortunate because, you know, the way she has and stuff, I don't know. It's, like, it's funny because the first time I actually played this game, I actually kind of, I couldn't help but think about, like, what, like, how the story, like, when I first played this game, like, how the story would have kind of went on to find out more about Sophie and just come to find out that she's not actually human. Uh, I don't know if I should feel depressed or not. Anyway, uh, so, control device. This wall is a little different from the walls around it, so that could mean... That it's a retractable shutter. If that's the case, then there must be a device somewhere that controls it. Yes, let's find it. Alright. No, I wanted to go in there. Okay, well, anyway. I'm going to this teleport. Yeah. So pretty much that's, that's it. Like, I mean... Take just that feeling, you know, of, uh, don't know what to do after finding it, that out. And we found out Richard's not actually possessed, he's some thing named Lamb does, taking over his, uh, body, by the sound of it. Find out who this Lambda is, probably, maybe, in this part, we don't know. Nice try, though. So, this is not a very long dungeon, at least, so it's always good. Hey, we got a device here that we can smack up. Do you want to open the control panel? Sure. Alright. I think that opened up the door, and this doesn't lead us anywhere, so. Alright. For these so-called monsters that are very dangerous, they're pretty damn weak. I wonder why. I mean, it's going to be for the fact that I power grinded off screen. All right, take that. Oh, the charge battery. No. Okay, so we got a battery here. I remember this part vaguely. So, damn it! Must you and then we'll take care of you, so. Although I don't really want to fight these enemies. It's, you know, more experience and more than I can't you know. believe our baby Hubert got so strong. <clears throat> Please don't mention my tomato parfait. Yay. Gotta love the tomato parfait. Alright. There's more stuff here. Alrighty, so I think I know what I'm going to do here. Put that in there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something smart. Go grab a battery from here. I mean, you figure at this point that, you know, these batteries are going to do something in this dungeon. So, that's what we're exactly what we're going to do. We're going to grab the dang batteries and get the blarg out of here. Well, not blarg out of here, but get more into here. That's the better term. So, this is like the first of like the five main dungeons we're dealing with, so we have to do with like the big bad, pretty much. So, lengthy, but I mean, what can you really do? I mean, we are in pretty much practically at the like. Last legs of the game, so I mean. Like we got all this crap to deal with and crazy stuff, man. There's nothing else I could really say other than that. I mean, we've gotten so far into this. I didn't think it was gonna finish this game, but I mean, look where we are now. And it's all thanks to you guys for motivating me. At least to the people that watch the video. Anyway, start! This unit looks still functional. 
Ooh, let me see. Yep, still ticking. You know a lot about these things, little bro. I studied the extreme... The, the extent... The extensively... God damn it, I can't speak today, guys. I'm sorry! I studied them extensively in military school, among other subjects. I had to be at the top of my class. Is that because you had to represent the glasses for the wearing crowd? Are you seriously making jokes about my eyewear? No, it's not. I consider being anything other than number one was utterly meaningless. Although, when I think about it now, it's almost funny. What is? At first, I worked hard to please my adoptive father. Later, it was to get back to Lon. Because they sent you off to be adopted? Exactly. I struggled to accept the truth of my adopt adoption at first. But once I did, I was furious at Lon. And my father, they were all I could think about. Huh. <laughs> it's like they say, mother is nece necessity of invention. Um, yes. However, I'm not quite sure what that applies here. <clears throat> Though I admit being quite shocked when I came back to Lon. How come? Once I came into power, I saw how difficult my father's job was. Lon's, Lon's political position has always been quite precious, after all. So well, why didn't you quit? Honestly, I don't know. Because I wanted to prove the world that I could do the job. So you could do so you could have revenge and stuff? I don't think that was it. And I don't think it was Lunt my was my hometown, or that it was an important strategic strategic point in for Strata. I think I was just testing my own heart. Hmm, maybe it's something that even more basic than that. Like what? <laughs> I can't tell you. That would totally ruin it. What why is that? You'll totally understand understand in time. Don't worry about it. If you say so. So we got the drive unit. Yay! Oh, we got the Lover of Launt title, which actually might be something useful. Give me a second here. Indeed that it is. Good stuff. Alrighty. Uh, I'm gonna go look this way. And... Where is the secret door? There's the secret door. I found the door. Oh, look, an enemy. Surprisingly, those these enemies are not tough as people say it is. Here we go. T level 2. Bam. And we were just supposed to use it. That's fine. That's fine with me. We must always give it our best. That Okay. Oh, red chest. Book of exchanging. It's both with the has the amount of gal you earn, but research professional point uh, amount of health. Uh, I, I don't know if I should say that's useful. Because, you know, money is... Sometimes a necessity in RPGs, in case you kinda need that equipment and stuff for your characters. And you know, armor is very it's very crucial for characters, especially if they want to win a match. And honestly, I, I prefer having armor over damage, because I want my characters to live. And then later on, weapons become an importance because you want to be able to do damage. But you know that you'll live because of all the armor that you have in that, like from earlier on. Sometimes I can't. At least in this game, you you can like balance out both things. Like you don't even need like good armor. You know, like the armor from I don't know, like the la uh, from like Infinia, like yeah, the armor that I had before, all like fully souped up with dualizing materials. And I can probably still do pretty well with them, the mithril armor. I guess the rumors are true. I really am that awesome. So, yeah. 
And, uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, well, we're gonna go this way, then. Okay, you're really pushing my buttons. It's not, like, too long of a dungeon, so... Yay! It's always nice. Though I don't really need it. It's always nice to have. And, oh, I got petrified. Wait, no, not petrified, sorry. Slow. I mean, it's better than being petrified. That's the right thing. Like, that, that shit is over. Shining Blade of Triumph! That's all. Burst. Make use of it. I serve to protect. That's a cool thing about. I think that's radial arc. It's a really nice little shower move. The shower of bullets. Perfect for anybody's showering needs. Uh, nothing else here. Which is perfectly fine. As I said, this isn't that long of a dungeon. So, it's pretty reasonable length. <coughs> it's a good thing I brought this battery with me. But, see, the problem is now we gotta backtrack all the way, grab another one. So, that's probably what you would have thought, especially for a dungeon like this. I'm very weary about this, especially my first time through. I got pretty damn annoyed at the fact that I had to do all that. Quite honestly, though, it just adds to the length of the dungeon. I mean, I can just cut the video and be like, oh, well, grabbing another battery. But that's not how we roll. So, and I'm not going to do, I'm not going to be a random idiot again and do that. Yeah, that's right. Put the dud in there. Because it's useless. It's worthless. It's like a penny. It's worthless. I apologize if you heard that. I had to... I'll just edit that out. Because people don't know how to shut up. Alrighty. So, we'll go ahead and go... here. Uh, B2 South. That's where I'll go. Sometimes recording videos, especially on a Sunday night, which thank fuck it's Sunday night, because I hate the weekend so much, especially because kids are... Oh, no. Shut up. And I actually have something important uh, to do this week, and I'm pretty happy about it, so. Let's see how it goes for me. For now, let's not get all too excited. Let's go ahead and. Wow, I, I didn't realize this, but I was poisoned, but I'm not poisoned anymore because Sherry is awesome. So. Sometimes I can't help but regret the past. As them. Okay. So. Wait a minute. I didn't just do that for nothing, did I? Oh, whatever. So we're here. Uh, crap. Oh, this will just save over this. I mean, we've gotten this far. The footage seems to run, look pretty good. So, by the way, this is being recorded off my Roxio. If anyone doesn't realize that, and I'm going to keep plugging Roxio for being awesome because, yeah. This looks just like that machine from the ruins beneath Wallbridge. This device preserves visual recordings of research targets. Lambda. Oh, hey, there's that word again. 
What does it mean, anyway? Lambda. In our world, Lambda has come to mean nightmare. Why is that? Lambda is a life form we discovered by accident while researching the Lostelia. When the Institute's director, Professor Cornell, began to study it, it quickly became a nightmare for us all. The worst aspect of Lambda, and there are many, is an ability to hatch monsters from its body. These monsters threw Fodra into chaos and eventually led to its destruction. That cocoon! It looks just like the one that appeared at World's Eye. After wreaking havoc here, Lambda fled to your world of Aphinia. We knew Lambda had to be stopped, so we created a humanoid capable of fighting it and initiated pursuit. That humanoid is Protos Hase, the one you call Sophie. Unfortunately, Protos Hase was unable to destroy Lambda. After much discussion, we surviving Fodrans chose to seal off Aphinia in the hopes of containing, but now, after so many years, the Aphenians have come to us. So you built Sophie and then sent her to our world so she could defeat Lambda. Does that mean Lambda is the one who created the cocoon? But wait, that doesn't make sense. I mean, Richard made the cocoon, right? Maybe Lambda knows how to disguise itself or something. Maybe it just looks like Richard. I refuse to believe that Richard and Lambda are the same. I know Richard. He's not a monster. He can't be. Sophie's getting worse. We must hurry. I agree. Come on. All right. <clears throat> so, after we take our big rich break. What's happening? Protos Hase's particles are breaking down. Excuse me? Protos Hase is composed of individual particles that act in concert with each other. These particles, tinier than a grain of sand, come together to form a human shape. And while they act as one, the particles also possess the ability to separate from each other, which is what you see happening right now. Oh. Asbel, Sharia, what's happening? Uh, hey, what's going on, you guys? It's the result of a process called distributive preservation. Your friends must be completely synchronized with Protos Hase's particles. I don't understand. When Protos Hase suffers heavy damage, it usually splits into individual particles, shuts down all functionality, and begins the process of reconstruction. This is known as particle preservation. Distributive preservation, on the other hand, allows Protos Haste to implant its particles into one or more separate vessels. Have you ever seen Protos Haste split into particles like this? Anyone? Oh. That must be what happened seven years ago. But... The unit shouldn't actually engage that procedure. The reason being, distributed preservation makes it much more difficult for the particles to reform. Failure could render reformation impossible, so why would Protos Hase have risked entering that state? Would her particles have any kind of effect on the vessels that they went into? Yes. In fact, while the particles prepare for reconstruction, they would repair any damaged areas of the vessel as well. So Sophie split herself into three parts and then used those parts to save Asbel, Sheria, and little bro! But then that means... Sophie didn't die after all. She was just... recuperating within us. It's amazing. 
She's been with us this whole time. I see. Then this would explain why we possess some of... the same powers she has. Incredible. So, what would happen if she underwent distributive preservation again in her current condition? Distributive preservation does not allow for reconstruction of the self. She would lose all elements of her current identity. Sophie, you risked your life for us. Impossible. Protos Haste was never designed for this kind of self-sacrifice. I fear further particle breakdown could be disastrous. We must hurry. That's a shock. Alright, um... So, we got Host of the Light. Fortunately, I'd like to level this up. So, that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna go this way, because that's what we do. It's in here. Nothing. Nothing of use, at least. Yeah. Ugh, excuse me. Fighting anyway. It was your own vanity that bested you. Or not. <laughs> Alrighty. But you know what this means? More backtracking. Actually, I don't think we need to backtrack. And if that's the case, I'll just cut the video and then go back and get the battery. For now, let's go ahead and do this. Because this elevator is useful, we can just go back to floor one and do it. Go into this doorway, because that's what... Oh, look! It's another humanoid. And a it's thing that we can fight. Okay. So it turns out these monsters were created by Lambda. He's a jerk face. Damn! Fearful Storm and Infernal Torrent just completely destroyed those enemies. Alright, our armor's been tempered, which is always nice. Yay! More elf. Love it. There's nothing going on here. Nothing at all. Guess we're just gonna go this way then. Go through this door. And fight more enemies. Because that's how cool we are. That's how cool we are, right? Yeah, this, this dungeon isn't too too long. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to make it so we can like, do it in one part. So. Aw, oh, come on. I want to use mine. Sometimes I get so lost in serious thought. Oh, chest. Misty Anklet. That'd be so for Sophie, but we can't use it right now, so. Let's keep moving. Yep. All right. Now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna whoops I'm gonna switch out Hubert for Malik for a little bit. That's what I'm gonna do. Look at that. He's level 51. Oof. That kind of hurts. 
So we'll give him some love. What's this? That's Tarlo X. I can't believe it's still here after all this time. Is this a humanoid as well? N no, this is merely old junk. Hey, you're hiding something. Come on, spit it out. This is the first android I ever built. Back when I was just getting started at the Institute. I never thought I'd see it again. This brings back memories. Really, Cornell should have just thrown it out. Sounds like everyone has something they're embarrassed about. Right, Tiger Festival? Uh... <laughs> Of course, that gets brought up. So, uh, throughout this episode, I will refer Asbel as Tiger Festival. Because that's how cool we are. Alrighty. And, uh, oh. more enemies! Love it. Unfortunately, I'm the only melee character now. This might have been actually the biggest mistake. I'm sorry, Malik. I'm gonna put Cuber back in my party. Of course, though, we gotta go back and flip the switch. Well, gotta go down, not back. Of course I want to open it. Alrighty, is there a chest over here? No. I was thinking maybe I, got, I, I would get surprises, but oh, oh, don't get any of that. Lame. Oh yeah, of course. I knew it. 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 You know what this means? Backtracking for the win. So, well, at least our backtracking is not super bad. No, go away. I'm not fighting you. So I'll see you guys at the thing. All right, we're back. See, that wasn't hard. All it took was lots of effort and backtracking. Oh, and while I was walking back all the way there, uh, Sophie got the Marathoner title. Basically, she apparently ran a marathon, and now she's probably going to be much faster. So, yeah. I got the title while I was walking back, so I thought that was pretty funny that, uh... I find it kind of a coincidence that she's the one that got the title. But, uh... Or not maybe or Is it a coincidence or is it irony? Uh, I think it's more irony than anything. Um... But yeah. So, we're gonna go ahead and save our game and then... Go ahead and initiate the cutscene and the skit. So... Let's go ahead and do that. So let's first initiate the skit, because that's what we do. Hmm. Huh. Hoo hoo. What is it, Pascal? You sound like an owl. It's these machines. They're a bit different from the ones I'm familiar with. But once I fiddle around with them, they seem simple enough. Fascinating. Adaptation is the hallmark of an exceptional engineer. Emerod, if you don't mind me asking, who are the Amarcians? If you are so curious to ask, they were a group of engineers who maintained the technologies of Fodra. I myself used to be counted among their number. Wait, you're an Amarcian as well? If that's the case, is it possible that you and Pascal are distant relatives? Relatives? No. I fear you have misunderstood me. Amarcia was just the name for a coalition of research engineers. Though bonds were strong, none shared any blood ties. What? We're not all in the same family? That means I have to return the money I borrowed from Poisson. Don't borrow money from children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you got that right, guys. Don't borrow money from children. Anyway. Yeah, into here. Alright. Cutscene time. Is this the machine that can fix Sophie? Please set Protoss haste down here, if you will. I will begin the procedure. Damage isolated. Initiating particle restoration. What the? Is that Sophie and Pascal? What's happening here? Don't look at me! How should I know? Some of the particles that float into the system have assembled themselves into visual form. <gasps> Pascal! Wait! So that's what she thinks of us. Sophie. It's happening again! Well, now what? Richard? After all, maybe, but still.
can't be. It's Lambda. I must destroy him. Everyone, get out! Right now! Sophie, watch out! Can't be screwing around this time! So, fighting Lambda. Believe it or not. So it turns out that the creature in the beginning of the game that attacked the, uh, the main characters when they were kids is Lambda. Crazy. This boss fight's not too hard to be honest. I mean, it doesn't really do anything. And before I say it doesn't do anything, I'm gonna completely wreck my team. That could be the coincidence, too. Ow. Oh, shit. And I think he's dead pretty much soon. Jesus. He really does not want to. He really does not want to die. There we go. Say that I didn't see this coming. Wow! Look at all the experience and freaking SP we get from that, and gold. So that was Lambda. you have failed to eliminate Lambda, Protos Hase. The mission I have to complete? Uh, what was it? Why does it hurt to remember? Sophie? How odd. I was sure the particle reconstruction was a complete success. Life maintenance functions appear to be fully restored. But I do see some problems with the information integration. Would you mind returning to the machine we used earlier? I'd like to make some final adjustments. That's fine. Can you make it, Sophie? Yes. Very well. Let's go back. That means we'll do it next episode. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode very long i guess but yeah so see you next time guys for another episode of tales of graces hope you enjoyed this episode and i will see you next time